on his people. Everybody say his people. So he is God being with him and let him go up to Jerusalem which is in Judah and build the house of the Lord God of Israel. He is the God which is in Jerusalem. And he said in verse 4, And whosoever remaineth in any place where he sojourns, let the men of his place help him with silver and with gold and with goods and with beasts beside the free will offering for the house of God that is in Jerusalem. Verse 5, the Bible says, Then rose up the chief of the fathers of Judah and Benjamin and the priests and the Levites with all them, remember the way pay attention to this, whose spirit God has raised. Amen? Amen? To go up to build the house of the Lord which is in Jerusalem. Amen. Whose spirit God has raised. Before God will raise a house, he has to raise spirit of men. Amen. Before God will raise a temple, before God will raise an altar, he has to raise men. Before God will build an edifice, God will have to build men. So the word of God begins to grow in the hearts of men. The spirit of man is the most fertile place where the word of God begins to grow. So anytime God speaks nations, he will not just speak nation to acts. He speaks nation to hearts. Are you listening to this? God spoke to Abraham. God did not just say, let there be Israel and there was Israel. No. God didn't just face Jerusalem and say that there be Israel and there was Israel. No. God spoke to the spirit of Abraham. And as he was speaking to the spirit of Abraham, he was planting the seed of Israel. Do you understand that? You see, everything God will do with your life, it will begin in your spirit. That's why you cannot take your spirit place lightly. That is God's fatal ground. That is God's field of action. That is God's operation room. That is, that is God's uh, manufacturing industry. Glory to God. If God will manufacture a great evangelist like Billy Graham, or another great evangelist like Renhan Bonkin, God will begin in your spirit. Your spirit is your best <coughs> property. Amen. Amen. Of all you have, it's not your clothes, it's your spirit. Do you understand? Amen. The best property, the best gift God has ever given to you is your spirit. Amen. So you must nurture your spirit. Get your spirit ready because God will do, will do business in your spirit. Every business God wants to do in earth and in eternity, he begins to negotiate it in your spirit, man. If you can't catch it at the spirit realm, you have lost it. You can't catch it. You can't catch it. Do you understand? A house is going to be built, but this operation, this transaction started in spirits. God had to raise spirits, men and women, who search their spirit. That even though everything in the physical may not look like it, but their spirit says yes, and therefore it is yes. You understand? Even when all physical circumstances are not saying yes, as long as their spirit says yes, they believe it is yes. So their spirit has become stronger than their body and their brain. You see, your brain can't build for God. It takes your spirit to build for God. Your brain cannot understand the dealings of God. It takes your spirit to make your brain cooperate. Your spirit must be in the lead, not your brain. Your brain will come after your brain doesn't come first. Do you understand this now? We must prepare our spirit ready and say, Lord, speak for thy servant here. Because the longer God... You see, do you know that when God began to call Samuel, and Samuel would say, go to rule, Eli. Do you, do you know that Samuel could do that for the rest of his life? Do you know that? 
until he learned to understand the difference between the voice of man and the voice of God. He will not make the next progress that he needed to make towards becoming the Samuel whose word never fell to the ground in Israel. You must follow that. It's a process. Many of us, since you were a teenager or since you were a young child, God has been trying to move you like Samson by the Spirit of the Lord between Esther and all those and Dan. The Spirit of God was moving him because he needed to be trained in the things of the Spirit. Sometimes God is training you with mundane experiences. Mundane experiences. About, you just hear something that tells you don't buy that cloth. It's not about the cloth, it's about your destiny. God is training you. It's not about the cloth, it's about your spirit. The spirit of God begins to move you. It looks like a mundane experience, but it's not. It's because God wants to raise a spirit that can raise a house for the Lord. Amen. He wants to raise a spirit that can build an altar in their generation. Yep. Amen. So God begins to use mundane things and say, no, not that food, not, not this money. Don't eat that. Why? It's not because of the food, not because God wants you to go hungry. It is because God wants to train your spirit. He wants to raise your spirit. Somebody say, help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. So the spirit of God does business with the spirits of men. Transact. The, the destinies of nations are determined in the realms of the spirit. Amen. The destinies of nation, whether they will live or survive or they will die, begins in the place of that negotiation. Just as in the realms of the spirit, negative spiritual reality, they are also making negotiations. They are raising their own people. They are setting them in places and say, hey, go after that one. Go after that city. Go. The devil is putting his men in places. And they are trying to design the next 10 years of Austin or of Rand Rock. They are making negotiations. The same way God is setting his men in place, putting them in strategic positions, creating their spirit to be in the ability to carry the capacity and the ability to stop the devil in his trap. Amen. And you and I are these men and women that God wants to use. And God says, I can't do anything in Round Rock unless I find cooperating collaborators. <laughs> you understand that? I want to build something but I need collaborators. I can't do it without you. True, God will not do it without any man. God can't do it without Cyrus. <laughs> he can't. He was an unbelieving king, but God can't do it without him. God had to stir his spirit. Praise God. And then his spirit. It takes a man like Cyrus to speak and everybody will respond like that. Do you understand? So, we must be... Everything God builds begins in the heart of him. Our spirit raised by God. Two, has a body in the heart of men. <coughs> Bodies. Don't waste the burdens God places in your heart. This year, you must be sensitive and aware to your burdens, the burdens that come upon your heart. The, 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 the burdens of the Spirit of God. God begins every building by a burden. Amen? Every building begins by a burden. The way God brings men into co-laboring with Him is to put the same body of the heart of God upon their heart. He wants you to feel the same way about the project like God feels about it. The reason why many people are not usable in the hands of God is because they look viable, but their heart cannot carry the burdens of God's, body, of God's heart. They are too burdened with other things. Do you understand this? Now? They are too bothered with other things that God cannot bother them with his body. 
So they are not the best people to build with. It has to be somebody whose level of burden is almost at the same frequency as the burden in the heart of God. Men who are remnants of the people of God. There has to be some remnants, people. The remnants are those who are leftovers. Those who are not in the majority. Amen. When God wants to use you to build a structure, an edifice of eternal dimensions on the earth, He begins to put uncommon burdens in your heart. You begin to be burdened with what everybody is dancing away with. What is not bothering others begins to bother you. There's that exclusive experience that God begins to bring you into. So if you use so don't go ask your neighbor and say, hey, do you see anything wrong about this? They will say, no. Don't go ask them. They don't, they're not bothered about it. Sometimes you don't go ask your pastor, unfortunately. Because even in the church of God, you see people who are bothered about their own lives than about the work of the Lord. Than about what the Lord is bothered about. The concerns of his heart must be the concerns of our heart. And it's not going to be by popular demands. It's going to be by a chosen few. So the burdens of your heart, you may look like one out of ten who is burdened by the things of the Lord. You are normal. <laughs> you begin to look abnormal to the world, but I want to encourage you that you are normal. Because that's the God normal. Amen. It has to be by remnant. In the leftovers, the few who have not been carried away, the leftovers whose knees have not bowed to bow, whose lips have not kissed bow, it has to be the leftovers who have the courage of the Lord Himself, who are able to dare the consequences. It has to be the few. Amen. It has to be the few. And may we be among the few. May we be among the remnants. In the name of Jesus. So everybody has gone after their own, their own things. Everybody is concerned about their own lives. About their own house. About their own conveniences. About their own comfort. Is there anyone left in this house who is burdened about the things of God? Those are the ones God wants to build with. Those are the ones God wants to build through. Lord, let the burden of the word of the Lord come upon my heart. Malachi 1.1, 1, 1, the Bible says, And the burden of the word of the Lord came unto Malachi. May the burden of the word of God come unto you. In the name of Jesus. You must be a burden sharer. You must be a burden bearer for God. And you must not be a burden waster. <laughs> Do you know that many people have that burden, but because they don't see that burden in everybody else, they just ignore it. Mm. The Holy Spirit has nudged your heart before about certain things that would have become your Noah's Ark. Is somebody listening to this? Amen. Because the way you have waved off several thoughts that God has placed in your heart is the way Noah would have easily discarded the thought of an ark. It was so unnecessary. It was so irrelevant. It was so unpopular. It was so unsuccessful either. It was also unsuccessful. You would think with that effort of building an ark, everybody should be in there. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm talking about? Noah could have dismissed it. And many of us continue to dismiss the burdens of the Lord. And you become a burden waster. God has given you an opportunity to come into the most relevant thing in earth. The most relevant thing concerning your living. You have had everything else but this one. God says, if you can break into this one, you are, you, are breaking, you, are break, you are breaking through, you are broken through on all other matters. But this one, this one, 
if you can align with this burden, it will blow your mind. Because it's going to build an eternal structure on the earth that generations after you will continue to enjoy it. Be a burden sharer. We can share burdens with our, ourselves. So that's what we find. He said people of their own house were giving them gold and silver. Don't dismiss anybody's burden. Encourage them. Pray along with them. You may not catch that burden when they cut it. But pray along with them. It will come over time. Amen. Amen. God places burdens upon men because God will always need a man who will bear his burdens as his representative on earth. The Spirit of God talks in our hearts to call our attention to the matters of the heart of God. Amen. There are many things that matter to people today, but the question is, does the thing that matter in the heart of God matter again? Does it matter to you? That's the only matter. God will use anything and anyone in order to get his bodies on loose.